class. Today, I'll be taking you through the Oswald Learning Theory. And I hope you find it exciting. According to David Osbert, learning takes place along two continuum. Either reception, discovery, or road meaningful. This aspect of the theory touches on how information gets to the learner. Now, if the learner is told or is given the information, then the information gets to the learner by reception. For example, as a teacher, if I tell you that there are nine planets in our solar system, that information has gotten to you through reception. Now, if by an experiment or through your own uh, discovery, you are able to get an information, then that information is by discovery, just as the name goes. So it means that if I give you some materials and you have a magnet and you're able to pass it on and the magnet is able to attract some of them, a particular material, what information will you get? What's the inference? The inference is that that material, that particular material that got attracted to the magnet is magnetic. So you've gotten that information by discovery. Now, the second aspect of Osbert's theory has to do with the cognitive processes that takes place when information gets to the learner. That's the mental processes. Now, if the learner is unable to link it to any known information already in the system, in its cognitive structure, or it is new to the learner, then the, it means that that information is root. It doesn't have meaning to him. So the learner will learn it or take the information as root. Now, if the learner is able to link it to an existing information, then the, the information becomes meaningful. The information is so therefore there are four patterns according to us there in the learning process. So along the two, the, the two different continuum, we have growth, meaningful, and reception, discovery. So it means that we can have meaningful learning by reception. It means that the information was received by reception and it was meaningful. We have meaningful learning by discovery. It means that the information was discovered, uh, discovered or gotten by discovery and it was meaningful. We have rote learning by reception. The information was get, gotten by reception and it was meaningless or it was new to the learner. So it is by rote. Rote learning by discovery. Today we are going to look at density. As we learned the other time, density is one of the derived quantities. A drive quantity, as we learned the other time, is one that depends on two or more other discoveries. So the density, by definition, is the mass per unit volume of a given substance. The density of the substance is given by the symbol rho. The mass is represented by the letter M, while that of volume is given by V. The mass of the substance is measured in kilograms. The volume of the substance is measured in meters cube. Therefore, the density of any given substance is equal to the mass of the substance in kilograms divided by the volume of the substance in meters cube. For example, if you are given a substance which weighs 50 kilograms and its volume is 2 meters cube, then the density of that given substance will be 50 kilograms divided by 2 meters cube. And when you divide 50 by 2, you will get 25. So the density of that given substance will be 25 kilograms per meter cube. Uh, please, the next time that we meet, we are going to look at the measurement of regular and irregular substances. Thank you. Last week we talked about matter. So that matter is anything that has weight and occupies space. We gave so many examples of matter in our environment. We said examples are wood, pen, kerosene, air, and a lot of stuff. Today we continue to work.
extended with the last one. We continue with the state of matter. When this state of matter, we are seeing that it is the form, it is the form in which matter exists. I take it again. State of matter is the form in which matter exists. Currently, there are four states of matter. They are solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. I go back again. Currently, there are four states of matter. They are solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. But for today, we're looking at solid, liquid, and gas. When we say solid, we are talking about a substance which has a fish shape and body. I think again, solid is a substance that has a fish shape and body. Examples are spoon, pencil, pen, it is liquid. A liquid is a substance that has a fixed body but no shape. It takes their shape of their containers. Examples are water, petrol, kerosene, it is Come to gas. Gas is a substance that has no big shape and volume. Common examples of gas in our environment is air. So that air is a mixture of gases. We have smoke, we have hydrogen gas, and so many things. This is where we end the class for today. See you next week. Then we are talking about the human skeleton, the skeleton in general. For our skeleton studies, we will be limiting ourselves by looking at the introduction to skeleton. By that, we will be defining the skeleton. Then we will also talk about the types of skeleton that we have. Then we will look at some examples under the type of skeleton. Skeletons basically form the the human body. It gives shape to the human body as well as it gives a lot of attachment for muscles. Skeletons is the skeleton is what helps us to be able to walk, to stand, to perform all the activities that we go through as living organisms. Of skeleton, or what are the types of skeleton that we have? Basically, we have three major types of skeleton, but for our study today, we will be limiting ourselves to talk about only two. We have what we refer to as the endoskeleton. Endoskeleton are the types of skeleton that exist in the organism or the skeleton. Continue, we started discussing last week talking about the concentration of solutions. Last week, we talked about concentration where we define concentration as a measure of quantity of solute in a given volume of solution. Then we said there are different ways of expressing concentration. Last week, we talked about mass concentration where we made when we said mass concentration is the concentration where we express the mass of the solute in gram per 
the volume in dm cube of solution so we say mass concentration is measured in gram per dm cube of a solution today we want to talk about molar concentration molar concentration as you can see on the board is the amount of solute in mole mol per dm cube of solution i want you to take notice that the mole what we are talking about unit mole is not m-o-l-e it's not m-o-l-e the unit the quantity is m-o-l-e but when you're talking about the mole or amount of substance as a unit the unit for amount of substance which is mole is m-o-l and again last week i also stressed that the volume we usually use in chemistry is a dm cube so when you have a volume in cm cube i thought how to convert to dm cube so molar concentration is amount of substance is mold mol per dm cube of solution molar concentration is also known as what the molarity of a solution the molarity so if you are reading a question and the question says molarity calculate the molarity of a solution or find the molarity of anything you ask to find molarity for they are talking about what amount concentration or the question may again talk about the father you should find the molar concentration what i want you to take note is the different ways amount concentration is called it is either called amount concentration the same thing is called molar concentration or some questions may say molarity i hope you are getting it thank you very much now the expressing molar concentration mathematically will be given as c over v c is equal to n over v where the symbol for amount concentration is what c and then c is given by n which is mole or amount of substance over the given volume so therefore the unit will be mole per dm cube so you may either write it like this mole you use the slash slash dm cube or you may write it like if you are writing it like this please take note of the difference between the screen one and the beginning one the first and the third one if you are writing it more per dm cube with a stroke you don't bring a negative sign 